Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of an Ethiopian hunter-gatherer. According to Nashakot, this is what he looked like. He's predicted to have dark brown eyes, Greek-shaped nose and black hair. Uh, with Wysak, he's also predicted to have black hair and brown eyes. However, Wysak is actually predicting him to have intermediate or kind of a brown color skin. Uh, with Snipper Free, he's also predicted to have intermediate or brown color skin. Um, he did not really have any of the light pigmentation variants in SLC45A2 or SLC24A5 implicated in light skin in modern Europeans and what's interesting is he did not have BH1, he did not have blue eye haplotype 1 uh, which Eurasians tend to have so he definitely had very dark eyes although he had some other light pigmentation variants in OCA2 region as well. He did not have the European no-go learner mutation in DRD2's pro 19 pro variation. Uh, he also had the A2A2 genotype in TAC1 variation of DRD2, once again a very typical genotype for any human, so normal risk of Parkinson's and ADHD, and he had this genotype in ACT1 which increases the odds of cannabis-induced psychosis when smoking pot, smoking cannabis. Um, he was heterozygous for Comte's Valmet variant, which is kind of interesting. It's kind of a European genotype to have. For non-Europeans, you would expect them to be just Valval instead of Valmet. So the implication of this genotype is that unlike the other non-Europeans who are all warriors with the IO, which means a lower amount of dopamine in the brain uh, and quicker dopamine reuptake, this individual is actually heterozygous for this variation, which means he had intermediate levels of dopamine in the brain. When it comes to OXTR, this is his genotype in the main uh, variations of OXTR. I don't think I can say that he had the sociopath gene here. And um, he did not have East Asian derived EDAR, so no East Asian facial traits, no epicanthic folds or shovel shaped incisors. Um, he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which means he was most likely lactose intolerant or at least if he was European, he'd be lactose intolerant, and he actually had the European mutation that protects against myopia, which is very cool, did not need glasses to see in a distance, and he also had this very interesting genoset, well, not a genoset, this genotype that prevents him from going bald. You see, people with this genotype do not go bald. Moving on to polygenic traits and illnesses, he had a pretty high risk score for Crohn's disease, uh, he had a very high risk score for type 2 diabetes, uh, he had an average risk score for schizophrenia, um, he had an average risk score for coronary heart disease, he had an, a high risk score for bipolar disorder, uh, he had a high risk score for Parkinson's disease, he had a average risk score for brain aneurysm, he had an average risk score for asthma, and uh, he had an average risk score for stroke. This is his result with Eurogenes K13, and this is probably the highest amount of Northeast African that any modern or ancient sample would score. I don't think I've ever seen any sample that scores more than that Northeast African. And with the oracle here, he's closest to various Ethiopians and Hadza, but not very close because I have a feeling that all these Ethiopians and Hadza have other admixtures. Um, such as West Mediterranean or East Mediterranean or Red Sea that this person does not have. And with G25, he's actually also closest to Hadza and various Ethiopians, and he's getting modeled as a mixture of Hadza plus Ethiopian, plus actually a little bit of Juhuan North, and Juhuan are Hoisan people who are hunter-gatherers living in South Africa today. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K36. You can see it's a very pure result. There's only four categories that he's scoring in total here. And these are actually all like Sub-Saharan, African, or non-Eurasian components. He's not really scoring anything Eurasian here. And uh, this is a surprise to me because I was expecting him to score a little bit of Eurasian as well. So here he's only scoring 1% Caucasus HG and like Northeast European, not much, not much Eurasian stuff, and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of African American plus Homani, uh, which are also a South African hunter-gatherer people. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. He's actually scoring 7% Natufian here, so maybe there is some Natufian-like admixture in this individual, just much less than what's typical for modern Ethiopians and East Africans. And with the Oracle, he's actually closest to Mota, which is kind of interesting because it is this is the sample that I'm analyzing, so it's nice that they had a reference for Mota with this calculator. And he's getting modeled as a mixture of Mota plus Hazara or Uyghur, which is kind of interesting. You can tell me what you think about that in the comments. 
this is what he scores with uh, Gedrosia K3. Very interesting result because he's actually got 12% West Eurasian and 6% East Eurasian here. And this is his result with Aphio Helix K10. Uh, you can see he's only scoring the African components here. He's not even scoring any Palestinian with this calculator, which is interesting. Not a lot of Middle Eastern admixtures you can see. And he's getting modeled with the Oracle as a mixture of Sandawi plus Gumus. Uh, Gumus are people in Ethiopia. Uh, fact check me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. And Sandawi are African hunter-gatherers in Botswana, I think. Now, uh, this concludes my video. Thanks for watching until the end. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy what I do here on YouTube. And of course, you can download this sample in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Uh, goodbye, guys.